All right, let's take a look at exercise six, which is problem 16 from the course text. So at 80 degrees C and 1.32 bars, the system methanol and ethanol is in vapor liquid equilibrium. The composition of the two phases is X1 is 0.25 and Y1 is 0.37. Calculate the fugacity and fugacity coefficient of each component in each phase. You may assume that the vapor phase is in the ideal gas state. All right, so we're told that we can uh, model the vapor phase as an ideal gas. Uh, that's great. Um, you know, looking at this compared to the other problems, we're not given the uh, vapor pressure of uh, methanol or ethanol. Uh, so even if we were to assume we had an ideal uh, solution, uh, we, didn't, we don't have knowledge of those vapor pressures, and so we wouldn't be able to do uh, essentially a Rayleigh's law calculation. Okay, uh, but that's okay. We don't have to, and we're not told to. Okay, but what's key is right. We're asked to calculate uh, the fugacity and fugacity coefficient of each component in each phase. Okay. Um, so if we're told, and we have a system of two-phase coexistence, uh, so if we're told that we can assume the vapor phase is an ideal gas, um, what's the fugacity of an ideal gas equal to, right? Or you know, of a component an ideal gas equal to? Well, that would tell me that the fugacity, say, of component one in the vapor phase, where we can assume the vapor phase is an ideal gas, is just equal to y1 times p. Okay, I know Y1, Y1 is 0.37. I know P, P is 1.32 bars. Okay, now if I want to go and calculate F2 of the vapor, well then it's just Y2P or 1 minus Y1 times P. All right, check, check. No problem. Uh, and then, you know, since we essentially skipped over it, all right, so in general, F1V would be V1V Y1P but when we assume we have an ideal gas, or when we're told that our vapor phase could be treated as an ideal gas, that just means that V1V is equal to one, right? Likewise, we'll have uh, V2V is equal to one, okay? Cool, all right, so then next, what about the um, liquid phase fugacity and the fugacity, fugacity coefficient of each component in the liquid phase? All right, what do we have there? Well, since I have two phases at coexistence, okay, I can write an isofugacity coefficient for each component, and that would tell me that F1L is just equal to F1V. Okay, I just calculated F1V, so I have F1L. Likewise, F2L would be equal to F2V, right, where I just calculated F2V. Okay, but then we're asked to calculate the fugacity coefficient. Um, of each component in each phase. So how would I calculate the fugacity coefficient of component one and component two in the liquid phase? Hmm. Well, you just do, you just expand up your fugacity exactly as we did before. Now this might, you know, not be obvious at first because, you know, um, in class we said, you know, in general when we're modeling liquid phases, uh, it's typically much better to define your liquid phase fugacity with respect to an ideal solution as compared to an ideal gas. Okay, um, when modeling liquid, uh, when modeling mixtures. Uh, but here, since we're asked for the fugacity coefficient, that suggests to me, you know, using the convention where I expand my fugacity uh, of including my liquid phase with respect to uh, an ideal gas. So that would tell me I know F1L now. The F1L is equal to V1L x1 times p. Okay, or again, I know p, I know x1, I know f1l, so that allows me then to solve for v1l. Right? Likewise, if I were to expand out the fugacity of component 2 in the liquid, it would be v2l, x2 times p, I know p, I know x2 is just 1 minus x1, I know f2l, I just calculated it, so that would leave me with one unknown v2l. Right? So I can go ahead and solve for um, everything that they were asked for. Okay, cool. All right, any questions? All right, and you know, just, just looking at this, I know x1 is less than y1, okay? So I know x1p is gonna be less than uh, y1p, okay? Uh, F1L is equal to F1V. So uh, y1p over F1V is equal to one, 
x1p over f1l, right? The denominator is the same, the numerator is smaller. So I know phi1l, or no, actually I would have to flip it around, right? Yeah, let's solve it. And let's try, and, I'm going to try and make sense of this, right? So if I solve for phi1l, phi1l, okay, is equal to f1l over x1p, okay, where f1l is equal to f1v, which is just equal to y1p. Okay, so p's can cancel, and I'm left with y1 over x1, right? So v1 liquid is just equal to y1 over x1, right? That's you know, actually pretty cool, right? So if I think about my, um, say, txy or pxy phase diagram, um, let's think about our pxy so that... Um, you know, say temperature is constant, uh, and then I draw an isobar for my systemic coexistence. That if I were to follow that um, isobar and read out the vapor composition and liquid composition, the ratio of those two is just equal to phi one v, right? That's pretty cool, right? And then the other thing is phi or y one is greater than x one, right? So I know that phi one l is going to be um, greater than one. So phi one l will be greater than one, um, and you know, it's kind of cool that phi1l is just the ratio of y1 over x1 when we can assume that our vapor phase uh, is an ideal gas, right? Uh, that is, well, I, you know, in my opinion, that's, that's really cool.